just fucking died. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Skyrim Iron Man. This week we go to conquer Bleak Falls Barrow, no matter how much I may want it to be Shroud Hearth Barrow. The theme of this week, experimentation. Let's get started. Don't worry Bjorn, I'm sure it happens to all of us. So this very first test I try to run is I'm interested in seeing how long it takes for them to stop searching for me. So to save us some time, I sped up the video by 16 times, and as it turns out, it takes roughly 2 minutes and 40 seconds for them to stop searching for me. So with that in mind, I whip out my bow and I try to make sure that the second bandit here is also going to be weak enough that I can launch experiment number 2. What is experiment number 2, you ask? I'm checking to see if my magic attacks get sneak damage bonuses. As a matter of fact, they do. Alright, now I mentioned this in last week's episode, but I'm just illustrating it here. The damage on the hunting troy bow before I reduce my stamina bar, the damage after I do so. As you can tell, it has a pretty extreme drop, and obviously it becomes more pronounced the better you are with that weapon and the stronger that weapon is. Now really quick, just in case you didn't know my lockpicking, I just hit these points I'm sort of highlighting. That point right there and really the one between the upper left and center of the lockpick are sort of blind zones, so hopefully you won't run into the lock there. As you can see, I just hit each of those points I was highlighting earlier. And fortunately for me, on this novice level lock, the pick can take a lot of abuse before it breaks, so I'm able to open it pretty handily. Alright, next up in the dungeon we have a bandit trying to solve a puzzle, and he fails completely, so I just save him the trouble of dying and burn him to death. Even though honestly, it's probably the less humane way for him to die. Aww, poor baby. Anyway, at this point I realize that I actually haven't equipped Oak Flesh, so I add that to my inventory, and I also equip it to my favorites menu for ease of access. If you've never encountered this puzzle before, you just have to make sure all the pillars match up their respective tokens, I want to say. Plaques, perhaps? So you get those lined up, you flip the lever, and the grate will open and you will be good to go. Just beyond the grate, there is the thief, which will level up my fingersmith. And I like to take my level now, upgrade magicka, and take the kind of obvious choice for me, which is going to be destruction. Rash Studies, which will allow me to access those nicer upper level perks. I just burn the skeevers and make my way to the very first boss of the game. Boss being an arguable term, I suppose. Now right off the bat, I decided to completely abuse this level design. My plan was to sneak and try to get some sneak damage on the wounded frostbite spider, but it's having none of that. So I run experiment number three. How long does it take for an enemy that loses sight to give up on the search, I suppose, and the answer is again 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Oh yeah, this is fair. <laughs> nice job, Bethesda, I really appreciate this level design. You can tell I'm just pissing off this frostbite spider. This is a pretty cheap way to win, but on the other hand, it's a giant frostbite spider. Now it's one of my favorite parts of the game. Always so satisfying, and in my opinion, the best part of this dungeon. Oh, you want to be free, do you? It's coming loose. Of course, I can, I can help you with that. He was gonna betray you, I promise. This this isn't because I'm a psychopath or anything. Mostly. Alright, so down beyond Orville the Swift, we finally make it to the Draugr. Now, I do get critical strikes on the Draugr, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get them if I can't hit them. So, instead of getting a stealthy bow attack, I completely bungle it and I end up getting spotted by the Draugr. I decide I'm gonna hide around this corner and make sure I toast him as soon as he pops around. Oh. Oh I see. 
Anyway, after some more uninspiring bow performance, it is a really good thing that this is real life and not a carnival game, otherwise I would not be walking home with the big stuffed teddy bear. I eventually managed to hone in on my target and actually kill another restless Drago. Now finally, on to another set of Drago. I just start beating the crap out of this one. The restless Drago are always more intense to fight, but this one clips straight through the floor because it straight up doesn't care. That Drago is quite understandably completely confused about what the hell is going on. And I decide to take out the other one. Memory fails to serve me and it is in fact right behind me. That actually ends up working out really well for me because it kind of instills confidence in my fire abilities even though I grab that sweet Nord longbow. So I go throughout the rest of the dungeon being a human flamethrower and taking care of everything quite handily if I do say so myself. Wow, I am getting a lot of kill cams. Seriously, a good third of these are the slow-mo kill cams. That's higher than I would expect. So this is actually, I left this in to illustrate that even though they are just restless draggers and draggers, even amongst the enemies of the same name, their health and defense really varies greatly. Oh, what time is, oh. No! Charles! I'll take good care of your wife. I can see you, by the way. In a moment of desperation, I down a health potion. I didn't see his life, but it turns out to be completely unnecessary. This hallway is safe as long as I'm on the j Finally, we make it to the famous Nordic puzzle doors. What mysteries will thwart my passage? What possible complexities could stop the Dragonborn? You're serious. On behalf of all the fictional people of Skyrim, I am incredibly offended that the ancient Nords had the balls to call that a puzzle door. Alright, so instead of going for the word of power as it's so clearly supposed to be done, I grab the loot just beforehand because I know I'm pushing my, my carry limit as it is. So right as you see the screen blur, it usually means that the guy is about to pop out of the casket. In this case, it does not. I actually failed to trigger him so I have to head back up and watch in confusion. Oh, there we go. So. At this point I decide it's probably a good time to take my next level. I grab Stealth and the Light Fingers perk. The Draugr makes his way down to the river where I've been hiding for a few moments and eventually decides that I was in fact an apparition. A mere specter of his mind. Oh, I shouldn't have woken up. Maybe I can uh, hit up Charles' wife. Oh, I knew it! Where are you, punk? Now, I actually get a lot of critical hits on this guy, so I'm pretty sure either this video or the next one, I'm going to go through and seriously adjust those values. Yeah, that was totally an epic magic fight all the way. Alright, he has a Nord Axe of Cold. I'm just gathering those because it'll be useful to be able to unenchant them and get that enchantment. Well, that's about it for this week, everyone. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you hopefully this weekend. Thanks for watching.